Hey, this is MXUX. This is a little list I put together. Um, that a lot of people say, well, what's what, what's the big deal with uh, hub mode as well? First of all, it's completely new technology. First time on the planet it's been on a commercial production vehicle. Um, but uh, this is an illustration which I said earlier, I believe. I made this illustration. Just real quickly go through this. Tire rotor stator tire rotor stator this is how a conventional electric motor looks like in a tesla and this is how the motor looks on a lordstown endurance hub motors the most valuable ip because they create margin and revenue so Everybody's saying, well, you know, big deal, you know, so what? So what? Why Why does it matter? It does matter. Number one, okay, I'll go down this list, reduces the part count. And you can look at the, you can look at the part count and you look at the parts in that Ford. What is the drivetrain part count? You know, I've gone through it in the video, you know, a thousand parts. Um, it reduces the bill of material. Okay. Um, Fewer parts, shorter list of uh, materials with mass production, the bill of materials cost will be lowered. Okay, so you got to mass produce these motors. And nobody takes into account when they go through the cost. It's not motor to motor. It's motor versus motor, CV joints, reduction gearing, and every other component that goes into place. Um, number three, the hub motors simplify manufacturing. Uh, it was easy to put on basically as mounting a tire. Um, the amount of workstations required compared to a conventional, you know, Tesla drivetrain is, you know, reduced probably down from, you know, if you, if you count subcomponents 10 to 1. So, uh, when they simplify manufacturing, they lower unit cost, they reduce weight. All the extra weight is gone uh, from the drivetrain. From uh, actually, the sprung weight is completely eliminated, and this is unsprung weight, which still has to be moved by the uh, drivetrain. But uh, the overall weight is reduced substantially by eliminating all those components. Uh, the reduced maintenance can be removed, installed with normal hand tools, okay? Faster manufacturing, okay? More output. It enlarges plant capacity, okay? That can, you know, by what? A factor of what? 50%? You can uh, increase your capacity because you can put more models, uh, more vehicles through quicker. Um and this optimizes mass production, and it optimizes profit by optimizing mass production. Uh, consumers get F1 style performance, which is, uh, you know, no one's talking about it, but it's all there. See it in the moose test. A more responsive truck, safer torque vectoring, and so forth. The Lordstown motor is the optimal battery electric vehicle drive unit. There is, I don't, I don't see how there can be any more reduction in this. And this is exclusive IP and a US, uh, unique selling point for Lordstown Motors. So, I mean, th there's so many, and you could go on and on on this. Now, I just want to mention this drawing here, which I have seen all over the internet, is my creation. It is uh, from a video, I believe, is titled How Hub Motors Work. So, but I think it, it does a good job. Uh, people just can't wrap their mind around how this works because it's such a unique solution. And they can't believe all the parts that are eliminated by this and that it works. And Lordstown has it, not only the hardware, but the software. And it's in production. So, this is a game changer. All right, let's get uh, back to the video here. Okay, what follows is an example of a lightning drivetrain by Sandy Monroe, a teardown. Look how many parts Lordstown eliminates. Okay, this is MXUX. I'm going to play this with the sound off. I just want you to see 
This is the uh, front motor only of the uh, Lordstown, I'm sorry, the Ford F-150 Lightning. And you can see the number of parts here. Um, there's just no end to the um, knobs and things and gears and uh, I wish I could get to the part with the differential here and there's the planetary gears and the sun and the planets and uh, there you go there's another shot of the planetary gears and then there's a shot of this, I believe, is the differential for the front wheels. You can see here the number of parts, the nested gears. And, uh, you know, this is just one component from that giant table full of components here. Let's see, there's a shaft that fits in. And these are all parts. These aren't even all the parts of the motor. Uh, that's the transfer gearing, reduction gearing. Um, you got your uh, stator over there. Um, they delaminated the rotor. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? That's mostly about the... Uh, and then you have, of course, you have all of these uh, seals and multiple multiple fasteners and uh, so on and so now here's a great discussion they're talking about the difference between the tesla pump and the uh, uh, ford pump here and then uh, this is a lubrication channel guide uh, they're comparing tesla and then the and there's your there's your stator um and then uh let's see what else do they have here and again here's your stator coming apart and you can see now this is just a front wheel motor there's more of this for the rear wheel as rear wheels as as well and uh i don't know what what this parts count is on this table here let's see what this is oh this is a locking differential for the rear motor, I believe. No, this is for the front motor, too. Uh, no, this is the rear motor. Well, in any case, it's a component of the rear motor, maybe. Okay, so how many how many parts do we have here? I mean, uh, I, I, I wouldn't even venture to guess. Now, here's some more. Uh, let's take a look at this. There's, there's a casting and... Uh, and um, more gears and um, you know there's just a never-ending uh, supply of parts here let's just look through here and uh, see what else is here anyway you get the idea um, I mean if we were going to this is a commercial they did uh, that's the uh, what you call it. Anyway, take a look at those parts. All right, now, we've gone through this. You can see all those parts. Now, hopefully, if I did this right, we'll be able to see that's an Alapi hub motor. That's the whole motor. That's it. Nothing else. That's contained. One of those goes on each wheel. There's three electrical connections, one cooling system connection. Those four bolts mount onto a suspension. In the endurance, it's a uh, straight axle in the rear and a, and a wishbone suspension in the front. The wheel bearing, the disc brake, everything is contained in that unit, as well as the stator and the rotor. That's it. Those are all, that's the parts. Here's a picture of the outside. That's what, more or less, what the endurance motor looks like on the outside. That is the rotor, the black thing. 
that is the rotor. That's what the endurance uh, uh, chassis frame looks like. And you can see those are inverters that are mounted amidships there. And there's the cooling system, the radiator up front. That's it. No differentials, no reduction gearing, no CV joints, no drive axles, no half shafts. No CV boots, no CV seals, no all those millions of parts for the differentials. They have a parking brake. Um, what is the parts reduction there? In these motors, each motor has a bearing, a rotor, and a stator. That's three parts. So one, two, three, four. What is that? Twelve parts compared to, and that was the front motor only. And I got to say that's 500 parts. There is a hub motor installed. That is what they look like installed. That's the whole thing. No drive shaft, no CV joint, nothing like that. This is very interesting. This illustration, hub motor versus traditional AC-DC motor as in Tesla. And it shows you here um, how, now this would be the tire. And this would be the tire. And this is a conventional motor here. So this, the tire would hook onto the rotor. The tire hooks onto the rotor of the Elafi. The rotor goes inside the stator. Here the rotor goes outside the stator. It's kind of an inside-out induction motor. Uh, instead of having the rotor inside the stator, the rotor's outside the stator. These are the parts. These are all the parts for the thing. That's it. There's the rotor. There's the stator. There's the wheel bearing. This is the disc brake. If you want to count that to, as a motor part, it's not. That is a suspension knuckle. That is not a motor part. So this, these are your parts here. Wheel bearing, rotor, stator. This is very interesting. It says, uh, WordPress is Aptero scam. <laughs> I did this illustration <laughs> probably a year and a half ago. Someone stole it and appropriated it. I've been looking to find it. I didn't. I, I couldn't realize which video it was in. Uh, but this, I think, explains exactly what's going on with the Elafe. And you got the ro the wheel, the wheel. The rotor, the rotor. The stator, the stator. You see how that is? It's like an inside-out regular induction motor. And that is my drawing. Someone stole it. Whatever. Um, this is another piece here on the endurance. Just to show you where these motors are installed at. And here's yet another E-mobility engineering. That is the wheel knuckle. Now we're going to call this part of the motor. Even though it's not really, but it is. Wheel bearing. That's the disc brake. That's the stator. That's the rotor. Okay, what do we got? Three parts here. Five parts if you include the brake and the, and the suspension knuckle. Versus 500 for the Ford. Let's see if we can go back to the Ford. There's your Ford. Okay. There's your Ford. And here, that's your Lafe on the top there. Ford kind of uses this with all the induction gearing and CV joints and everything. This is the Lafe. Again, that's the Lafe installed. That's what the Lordstown Endurance frame looks like. That's the hub motor. That's the whole thing. And that's the whole thing. Okay? And that's the whole thing. These are all examples of different types of hub motors. But this is the hub motor that's in the Lafe uh, hub motor that's in the uh, Endurance. 
This is being manufactured on site at the Lordstown facility. Lordstown Motors owns the manufacturing line. Lordstown Motors has the rights to this motor, I believe, in North America. And Foxconn is operating this line. They are manufacturing these motors at Lordstown. So, that's the endurance. And you see these are the four bolts. The wheel bearing is inside there. These are the four bolts that mount to your, either your wishbone uh, suspension arm or whatever it may be. And in the case of the endurance, the straight back axle, rear axle. Versus, and that ain't even all the parts. Get, do you get my feeling here? There, uh, let's see, let's see if we can get it there. That's all the parts there. Cooling and power and control. Okay? What's this? Oh my goodness. That's about half the parts for the front motor only of the Ford F-150 Lightning. This is why, and I am going to try to go back to my original drawing here. So that you can get a grip on this. Uh, this is why the uh, Lordstown Endurance is a better vehicle. Oh, sorry. There it is. Hub motor versus traditional AC-DC motor. Tire, tire, stator, uh, rotor, rotor, stator. Stayer, stayer. You see that? That's that's equivalent to that. That's equivalent to that. And there's your tire. Okay, that's your Elafe. That's your Lordstown Motors. And you know what? I think Lordstown Motors ought to change this. The name of this component to the Lordstown Motor. Okay, it's the Lordstown Motor from Lordstown Motors. And there's the Ford again, and there is the Lafe, that's the endurance, and there's the Ford again. All right, you get the point. This is MXUX. I just wanted to shoot this out there real quick. Thanks a lot for watching. Good luck in the market.